Hello guys, welcome to the first out of a three-part series video about Hadrian Ferrand's improvisation style. We're gonna do this by analyzing Hadrian's solo over Roy Hargrove's tune called Strasbourg Saint Denis. The solo is from a jam session at NAMM show this year and the link to the video is in the description. Here is the solo. <laughs> For the sake of keeping it shorter, we'll be looking at the first two choruses of his solo. In today's video we're gonna get started and we're gonna take a look at phrases. In the next video we're gonna talk about the scales that he's using and we'll conclude this series by talking about target and approach notes and we'll do a main takeaway from doing an analysis like this. So with all that said, let's get started. Here is the transcription of the first two choruses. We have here the first chorus starting here. Is each chorus is eight bars long, so it comes here, and then the chord progression repeats here on the second chorus, which goes into the second page here. I wrote it in two systems, so we have first just in standard notation, in bass clef, and something to note is this is written octave lower, so it's being played octave higher, but this is way more readable, uh, so I just wrote it like this. And as you can see, we are in A flat major key or F uh, relative F minor. You can see this by the four flats. And our second system here is tabs, and it's written exactly where these notes are being played. So this is written exactly like he plays it from the video. And lastly, the chords are written above the uh, systems here. So these chords up here, they belong to this system. Uh, these chords here, they belong to this system. Next we're gonna highlight all the phrases and all the scales that are not in our A-flat key, so the whole thing will look like this. The boxes that you see represent phrases. The same colored boxes are phrases that are connected in one way or another. You can think of these phrases as musical sentences, motifs or ideas. I'm gonna play the audio again and on the screen you will see highlighted phrases as they go by. Keep your ears and eyes open for the phrases that belong to the same group and how they are connected. Let's look at the phrases from up close. So we have this beautiful opening line here. Very simple and effective. Uh, it's using nice notes and um, leaving a lot of headroom for, for what's to come next, right? Um, our second phrase is repeating it and developing. An important thing here is also the articulation. I didn't know how to write exactly. If you have questions about that, write it in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and then we get to our uh, fifth bar here, but the third phrase here in the red. We get this. And this is the highlight of this uh, group. Uh, it's all the building up, it's going higher and uh, more a little bit more interesting rhythmically and it's like a bridge leading to the leading to this uh, blue group uh, which is all being connected in my opinion by this uh, dominant sound which means they're all like finishing on this a natural here you see a natural the first 
phrase, second phrase A natural, third phrase A natural. So the first phrase goes like this. So this A natural anticipating the this F dominant sound and then the second really short phrase again just confirming it and then an instant answer into this A and really suspending this altered uh, sound or this uh, you could think of it as a B flat harmonic uh, sound because we have this A natural in there right and then we get to our sec uh, third group this is the green group this is uh, my favorite phrase here it's moving really beautifully from the tonality creating almost like super superimposing an F7 altered here again that creates a uh, movement into this B flat minor fini finishing here on the minor third of the B flat minor chord so it's just uh, he's constantly creating interesting movements in his uh, phrases so his phrases phrases are all about moving from point A to B in not obvious way in creative way uh, making the listener really pay attention so this first green um, phrase goes like this <laughs> manner and an insta an instant answer right more rhythmical complexity again this uh, like a triplet and then we're returning again you see a red box there at the bottom it goes all the way into the uh, uh, second page so if I can get there yeah it's again it's a quoting for uh, it's quoting the first phrase <laughs> right so if you remember the first phrase <laughs> and this is right so it's coming back to this original idea which is really nice way of connecting all together and then we get this last uh, really long phrase really the highlight the peak of this uh, in this if you look at this in two choruses this long 16 note run is moving from different scales different sounds we get a new e flat altered sound again landing uh to this uh chord tone note here on a flat major using f altered and again resolving with this approach notes targeting this d flat in here's a b flat minor chord i forgot to write so it goes like this this line <laughs> So um, a really uh, important thing you can take away from his phrases is, is his phrases are always over the bar lines. I mean, almost always. They're all about movement. So moving from point A to B in a creative, not very obvious way um, here, like you can see like superimposing harmony, basically adding like an F7, so he's creating m movement, he's all about movement, which music, what music really is about, and constant then tension and release, you know, he treats us in the beginning with this beautiful simple line, nicely developing it, and then just using really more unusual sounds. One thing to note is he probably used some, some choices of his notes here also because the uh, in the original video, if you look at it, the guitar player, for example, here on just a regular dominant chord e flat is the dominant of a flat tonality right um, should be a natural nine but the the guitar player always plays a flat nine so an e or a f flat actually should be correctly right so then this narrates the sound right so and i think that heijin really picks up on that and uses this uh, to play around with these sounds so that's it for the first video. We saw how the phrases connect and how important it is to develop your ideas instead of just throwing out new material without developing it. We could also see a gradual development in rhythmical, technical and melodical complexity. 
As you know, we started with a very simple and effective phrase and we ended up with a really long run of 16th notes there. Next time we're going to look at the scales that are being used in his solo. As always, if you have any additional questions, just write them down in the comment section. You can send me a DM on my Instagram or just write me an email. If you did enjoy the video, consider liking it, subscribing to the channel for more content and I'll see you next time.